On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, Tesla chief designer Franz von Holzhausen showed up at a car show with the latest pre-production Cybertruck, and as a result, we learned a few new details about the imminent stainless steel beast. Plus, more automakers sign on to use the North American charging standard, Tesla rolls out its first bit of advertising, and more. Greetings friends, Ryan McCaffrey here with you for the 413th weekly episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast. This one for July 2nd, 2023. Happy 4th of July holiday weekend to my American listeners. Well, I hope at least a few of you were able to make it out to the Peterson Auto Museum in Los Angeles last Sunday morning for that first ever EV cars and coffee that I mentioned. Why do I say that? Well, as promised, Franz von Holzhausen was there, but what I had no idea about was that Franz would roll up in the latest pre-production Cybertruck build. People were able to get really close to it, take a ton of pictures, ton of photos, and as such, there are now a lot of new photos and videos of the latest build online. And as I said, you could just get right up to it, almost touch it. So here are some things we've learned from all of those new pictures, those new videos. I wanna kick off the show with that because I know so many of you are eager to hear more about the Cybertruck, myself included. So, first, the tires. We already knew that the tires are custom Goodyear tires. The, they have a custom sidewall to perfectly match the aero air wheel covers, I should say, aero wheel covers. And uh, now we know the tire size. 285, 65, 20 inch. I wanna say thank you to Zach of the BLK MDL3, Black Model 3 Twitter account for posting those pictures. We still don't know exactly how much those custom tires are going to cost, since of course, they're not on the market yet. But going on tire rack and pricing out something similar, let's say the Michelin Defender LTX All Seasons, and you get $472 per tire or $1,888 for a set, and that's for just the tires, that's without mounting, without balancing, etc. Again, we'll have to see how much the OEM Goodyears are gonna cost. I would suspect a little more because they're probably going to have acoustic foam in them for noise reduction purposes and they might be low rolling resistance tires as well, but I think that $1,800 to $2,000 range for a set of four, again, just the tires without installation, probably a reasonable place to set your expectations for now. And then of course, the, the part two to that is how long are those tires going to last for that $1,800 to $2,000 per set? That also remains to be seen. Next up, we learned that the Cybertruck seats are ventilated. You love to see that, or I guess more specifically, you love to feel that when you're sitting in those seats. You want cooled seats in a truck that can be used for work, that's gonna be out there, you're gonna be working on a job, be nice to hop in your truck and have that cooled, ventilated seat blowing some cool air on you. And then speaking from personal experience as a DeLorean owner, I can also say that you want a stainless steel skinned vehicle to also have ventilated slash cooled seats, which the DeLorean obviously did not back in 1981 because the stainless steel, trust me on this one, can and will get really hot in the sun. But of course the DeLorean in 1981 did not have the ability to pre-cool the cabin of the car from the DeLorean app, which didn't exist because none of that existed. But at least you'll have that ability with your Cybertruck, but still, that stainless does get hot, it will heat up the truck, it'll be nice to have that ventilated seat option to cool you, regardless of, you're gonna want that turned on along with preconditioning the cabin. 
And uh, how do I, if you're wondering, well, wait a minute, Ryan, you live in Northern California where it's just mild all the time. The first three years I had my DeLorean, I drove it every day. It was the only car I had in Arizona, in the Phoenix area. So plenty of 110 plus degree days were spent in my DeLorean. Number three here, item number three that we learned uh, from, about the Cybertruck after Franz brought it to the Peterson for the EV cars and coffee, that the door panels are white, even with the black seats, as is the plain square dashboard block, also white. And combined, black seats, white door panels, white dashboard block, I think it definitely gives it more of a Blade Runner-y look, which I like. I think it looks really good in these latest pictures. Now, I could easily be wrong here, but I could also interpret this as being a bit of evidence that my theory about the Cybertruck not having any other interior color options being correct for manufacturing efficiency reasons. Perhaps instead, every Cybertruck interior will be a black and white interior, and that's just how it's gonna be. So that remains to be seen, but I thought you'd wanna know about that. Two more for you. Remember when I asked Franz during my last interview with him back in January if that 8-bit pixel art style cyberfied Tesla T logo as the charging indicator light inside the charge port door on the original Cybertruck prototype was going to make it into production? He kind of gave me a vague answer, and now it seems like I know why that answer was vague. It appears to not be making it to the final truck. Instead, the charge light indicator icon is the triangular silhouette, the profile, triangular silhouette profile of the Cybertruck. Still looks cool. Again, there are pictures of it online, but if you ask me, it's not as cool as that Cyberfied Tesla T logo, which as I said to Franz, I think they could have put that on shirts and sold it. That would have been a whole other cool little line of, of Tesla merch, having that cyberfied Tesla T. Hopefully Tesla will find a way to work it in some way, somehow, at some point down the road. Finally, this one's just speculation, but it was the first thing that popped into my head, and I saw a number of other people share the same thought. And what I'm talking about here is pictures of the forward-most camera that's on the lower front bumper of the Cybertruck, and it's got a little notch right above that lower front bumper camera. So my thought, which again was shared by a number of others posting in the community, that it could be for a washer jet to spray that camera clean when, and I say when, not if, it gets dirty because down in that location in an off-road capable apocalyptic proof truck, that camera is absolutely going to get dirty and it's going to get obstructed in the day, even in day-to-day -day use, even just on a rainy day, which we get plenty of in the winters here in the San Francisco Bay Area. So hopefully that's what that's gonna be, but that is still, again, just speculation for right now. Okay, so piggybacking on this before I move to the next topic, I thought after getting all of these new little Cybertruck details that I would check in with all of you guys in the Ride the Lightning audience, check in on your Cybertruck hype level. So that was the subject of this week's Patreon poll, which again, you don't have to be backing me on Patreon to vote in, it's open to the public. Just every Tuesday night is typically when the polls go up. I think I ended up putting this one up on Monday because the thought popped into my head. And I thought, well, why wait? Let's get the poll going now. Anyway, patreon.com slash Tesla podcast. That is my Patreon page where you can go not only to support the podcast at the different support tiers, but again, you don't have to be backing me to vote in that Patreon poll that I cover off on on each week's podcast. So... I said to you guys, what is your current hype level for the Cybertruck? 39% of you said, hype rising. I'm more excited now than I was when I first made my reservation. Give me that truck. Just behind that group, 
37% of you said hype level unchanged, regardless of whether that hype started high or low. Okay. 11% of you said, I'm not interested in the Cybertruck. 7% of you said, my hype level has gone down. The more I see it out in the real world, the less I'm interested in it. And 6% of you said, just show me the results. So thank you to everybody for taking the time to vote in that. I'll read you a couple of the comments here, starting with Mike Hill, who says, my hype is way down, but mostly due to the delays. It has taken so long that I changed my plans from cyber to lightning. So, all right, Mike, hope you get your Ford F-150 lightning very soon. By all accounts, an awesome truck. Uh, Let's see, who else here? Keith Fernandez says, it appears the Cybertruck is going to be a popular hit with many functionalities. Would still have liked to see a designated storage area for a spare tire. So we'll see. As Darkstar Actual noted, there is a storage area, again, confirmed with new pictures, under the bed, uh, which similarly, I believe the Rivian R1T has something similar. But it's tough to tell. It doesn't look like that space is big enough for a spare tire, but we'll see. Uh, Daniel Green saying, I love watching it get more and more refined. I'm thinking it might still have a few tricks up its sleeve. Too big for me, but I cannot wait for it to start displacing ICE pickups. And then finally, I'll say Weston Anderson says, mine has gone down, but mostly due to the expected price increases. It will go back up if they deliver around the prices they took reservations at. All right, thank you to everybody again for taking the time to vote in this week's Patreon poll. Uh, next up, a little another little warm-up story for you, a design studio update. I like to update you when things do get changed on the Tesla design studio for any of the four cars. I had just got done telling you two or maybe three episodes ago at the most how Tesla removed the white interior option from the standard all-wheel drive Model Y. Well, it's back. So thank you to Drive Tesla Canada for the heads up on that. I'm not sure why Tesla changed their minds so quickly on that, but hey, I'm not going to question it because it's always, always, always nice for customers to have more choices when they're ordering their car, not fewer. So I am glad to see this. All right, one more warm-up story for you. And yes, I'm going to sound like a broken record here in what I presume will be a very welcome way. Stop me if you've heard this one before, but another major automaker has signed on to use Tesla's NACS charge port in its cars. Volvo is the latest to join the NACS coalition. And this is now already becoming so routine that not only did we not get a Twitter Spaces chat between Elon Musk and the CEO of Volvo, all we got was a one-line tweet on the official Tesla Twitter account, which wrote simply, Welcome Volvo owners to superchargers across North America, with then a link to Tesla's general, not Volvo-specific NACS blog that's on the Tesla website. And then... Later in the week, before I recorded here, Polestar, of course, the sister company to Volvo, they joined in as well. And, before I could sit down to record, Electrify America, that big third-party charging network, has signed on to include NACS moving forward, and so has Blink, if you have Blink third-party chargers in your area as well. Well, at this point... We have certainly reached the spot where, basically, like Thanos, NACS is inevitable, at least here in North America. The Volkswagen Group is really the last big domino to fall. And just because they're not only one of the legacy automakers that's already taking EVs seriously is why I call them a big domino, but they also have tons of brands under their umbrella, including, of course, Volkswagen itself, Porsche, and Audi. And all of those companies have good EVs on the market. So we need them to join in. But I think that NACS has enough momentum now where everyone who sells electric vehicles in North America is going to have to support it. The same way that Tesla 
has to equip its cars with a CCS port in Europe. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a give and a take on this thing. Oh, by the way, and yes, we're still not into the proper news here and we're 14 minutes into the podcast. Just wanted to give you a little PSA that next week we will have Tesla's Q2 production and delivery numbers. I would expect the earnings call to be scheduled for Wednesday, July 19th, meaning that uh, if that does prove to be correct, and we'll know next week, if that is the case, Wednesday, July 19th, that means I will have my quarterly recap highlights and analysis for you in three episodes from now. Finally, before I get started with the actual full run of Tesla news this week, and again, there is plenty, I want to say that I hope all of you kindly backing me at that $10 a month tier or higher on my Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this week's lightning round mini episode. I got back to talking Tesla this week and specifically four names that I came up with that I think would be good for Tesla's generation three car. So if you're curious what four names I came up with, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Tesla podcast. You can support the podcast at that $10 a month tier, which will not only get you access to all 53 of those lightning round mini episodes that I do every week on Patreon, but you'll get early access to each week's regular podcast that you're listening to now as well. So please do check that out. Don't forget too, if you'd, if you'd rather not do a monthly pledge, but just pledge once, support me once for the year, you can do that on Patreon and you will get a 10% discount on whichever tier you choose in exchange for that very kind and generous commitment of one year. And Patreon has recently enabled the seven-day free trial, which I've attached to that popular $10 a month tier. So you can sign up for that if you'd like to check out what it's like to get early access and get that lightning round episode, just what it's like to be supporting the podcast on Patreon. I will say I am humbled and grateful if you do choose to back me here because this is a free podcast and I appreciate your support to help it keep going. Okay, here we go. First up this week, Tesla reportedly abandoned its plans to build a gigafactory in Valencia, Spain after the plans and negotiations were leaked in a report late in June. This comes via Tesla Rati who says, earlier in June, we reported that Tesla was in quote, very advanced negotiations with the Spanish government to bring an automotive production facility to the city of Valencia. This was based on the report from Spain's Cinco Dias, which stated that Tesla was ready to invest four and a half billion euros. Tesla was reportedly, quote, one of several multinationals with which the Valencian government was in dialogue to land in the region, end quote. However, Negotiations have seemingly broken down after Tesla grew frustrated with the leaked report. It was first reported that Tesla pulled out of negotiations with Spain by digital economy. Tesla was, quote, very angry with the leak and has decided to pull out of Spain, eliminating the possibility of the country landing the automaker's next major production facility. Well, I've got a few thoughts on this. Number one... I am not as smart as the people at Tesla, but I do have to honestly wonder how Giga Spain would make sense at this moment in time when Giga Berlin is only 1,373 miles away. Now, for context, if Spain had happened, if Tesla had moved forward with a Valencia Gigafactory, that would have put those two Gigafactories closer then Giga Texas and the California Fremont factory, which are 1,732 miles apart. I mean, I can't imagine that there's enough demand right now to need two Giga factories in Europe, but presumably this was all being negotiated with the Generation 3 car or cars in mind. Thought number two I have on this topic Tesla is only able to do this, meaning to send a clear message that negotiations for big projects with them must 
must have their secrecy respected during the negotiating process because they have more leverage than the governments that they're talking to. Everyone wants a Tesla Gigafactory because it means thousands of clean energy jobs with one of the fastest growing and just biggest, most valuable companies on the planet. I mean, make no mistake, if Tesla weren't in the position of power it is in these negotiations, they probably would not have pulled out of what appears to have been a near deal and made a public show about doing so. So this is about sending a message to other cities, other states, and other countries. And that message, do not talk about your potential gigafactory until the deal is done. And then my third thought on this is, I'm not sure that they'd have been next anyway. I mean, not that that sort of makes this hurt any less for, for losing this deal, because it seems like India might be the front runner for the next one. And here's the thing. If Valencia makes sense for Tesla or somewhere close to Valencia, then I suspect that this scolding from Tesla, which is basically what this was, might merely kick Valencia slash Spain to the back of the Gigafactory line, but not kick them out of that line necessarily. Next up this week, an interesting full self-driving beta update. Elon Musk says that version 12 of the FSD beta will be the official everyone who buys FSD gets it release. Responding to a tweet from Whole Mars blog that quoted Elon as saying, FSD beta 12, quote, maybe later this year, well, Elon responded to that tweet saying, quote, version 12 won't be beta. That's it. That's the end of the quote. That's all he had to say, but uh, he packed a lot into just a few words there. So, okay, I recognize it's me saying that version 12 will be the official everyone who buys FSD gets it released. Elon didn't say that, I said it. But that's basically what not beta means, right? There's no other possible interpretation for that that I can come up with. That particular aside, I would temper my expectations for this happening anytime soon. Now, it could, certainly, but history suggests that it won't. That's not to say that progress isn't being made, because it absolutely is, but this could, and by this I mean version 11 that we're on now, this could and very likely will go on for a while. We're on 11.4.4 .4 now, as of this recording. So we could go 11.4.5, 11.4.6, etc. You see where I'm going here. Or even if we went to 11.5 next, Tesla could take it to 11.99999 if they felt like it. The point is here, we all know this is a complicated project, one that is, it is one of the largest software undertakings and AI undertakings in the history of software development, maybe the biggest. And even though we've all seen the notable steps, of uh, the observable steps that Tesla has made over the almost two years since the beta really went public, there's still a ways to go but it is nevertheless interesting to hear how Elon is thinking about the progress and that the next major version, I mean, we know that version 12 is going to be the one that is comprised entirely of neural nets, that that's the one that should be ready for prime time. That is pretty cool to think about. Next this week, Stitcher, whose app is in all of our cars for your podcast listening pleasure, announced that it's shutting down in two months from now. Stitcher tweeted, quote, The Stitcher app and website will discontinue operations on August 29th, 2023. Thank you for giving us the opportunity over the last decade to create the best possible podcast listening experience. Well, I imagine Tesla may only be learning about this at the same time that all of us are. So... I would like to take this opportunity to officially campaign 
to anybody from Tesla who's listening, may we please replace this with a native Sirius XM app. Now, Sirius XM also owns Pandora, and there are podcasts on Pandora. So you could you could fill that there, but obviously Sirius XM would give us a whole lot more than Stitcher did. And, and I also recognize you do need a subscription for Sirius XM, which you didn't with Stitcher. But again, I, I'm a big fan. I've had Sirius XM since I got my last car in 2006. And while I don't listen to it nearly as much anymore because I don't have it natively available in my Model 3, I do still really enjoy it. They've just got a ton of stuff from every genre and every era of music that you could ask for to tons of great talk radio stations from sports to news to politics to whatever. So... Come on, Tesla. You've already worked with Sirius XM before, back when it was available natively in the Model S and Model X. So please pick up that phone again. Dial up the folks at Sirius XM and let's get a native app done for every S, X, 3, and Y on the road because all of our cars are connected via the cellular data connection. So we could, if we get that Sirius XM app, we can be using it immediately as soon as the app is, is put onto the car. So that's, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers for that. All righty. Finally this week, the last thing I've got for you is this. Remember at the annual shareholder meeting when Elon announced that Tesla would indeed dip its toes in the advertising waters? Well, they have now done just that. Twitter user Yashu Sharma noticed it and confirmed it, tweeting, quote, Tesla has officially started advertising on Google. It was verified via the ad transparency tool that Google provides advertisers. Currently, there are 18 ads launched with likely more coming. I'm going to give you a sampling of some of the ad headlines that they have on Google. So thank you again to Yashu for this. So you've got Model Y starting from 395 pounds a month. This is obviously in the UK. You've got Model Y, highest safety score SUV. Model Y, freedom of travel, supercharger network. You've got another leasing one, Model Y starting from, I guess that's the same one, but with a different description. You've got, again in the UK, Model Y from 44,990 pounds, UK number one best-selling EV. And then uh, shifting gears to the other side of the business, the energy side of the business, the headline on Google ads, switch to Tesla Solar and save Tesla Solar near you. Get your Tesla Solar system, solar installers near you. And finally, maximum solar production. 24-7 24-7 remote monitoring. So more advertising going on over on Google. Thanks to uh, Tesla now digging in, starting to spend a little bit of money. It's, it's baby steps, certainly. Just spending a little bit of ad money on Google, seeing where it goes, no doubt. And Tesla will certainly learn from whatever data they glean from this. And they'll go from there, perhaps to things like TV, YouTube, etc. We'll see where they decide to go. But regardless, I think it's nice to see Tesla start to get the word out in more ways than just purely relying on the word of mouth of folks like us. All right, I said that was the last news story. I've actually got one more for you. Tesla will reportedly shut down Giga Texas for Model Y production line upgrades and shifting employees to the Cybertruck lines. This will be happening this week here, this 4th of July week here in the U.S. This story comes via Drive Tesla Canada, who writes, According to drone pilot Joe Tegtmeyer, who obtained the information from several of his sources at Giga Texas, and if you're wondering who Joe is, you know, you heard drone pilot. Joe is... uh, is probably as close to a Giga Texas expert outside of Tesla that you can get by virtue of the fact that he has a YouTube channel where 
he is always flying that drone around, seeing what he can see, all the little interesting updates and things happening at the factory. So I am inclined to give Joe the benefit of the doubt here on uh, in terms of believing his sources and, and that this shutdown is correct. So th- according to those sources, the shutdown is expected to last about five days, a duration that is similar, says Drive Tesla Canada, to the timelines at other gigafactories that have undergone production line upgrades. Once the upgrades are complete, Model Y production will of course be slower than it was before as employees become familiar with the changes and new processes, but production rates should improve rapidly and surpass the existing rate of output, which as of the last update from Tesla was that magical 5,000 Model Ys per week. While Tegmeyer provided no details on what exactly will be upgraded on the Model Y production lines, the shutdown will also coincide with an even more important change related to the Cybertruck. During this shutdown, Tesla will be moving some employees who were previously working on the swing shift over to the Cybertruck production lines. These employees will be calibrating and conducting final testing on the Cybertruck lines to get them into production status. According to Joe, this testing and calibration should last most of the month of July, putting a potential start of Cybertruck production in late July or early August. Well, if you are going to do this, and of course you have to, if you're Tesla, that's, (laughs) there's no choice. The 4th of July holiday week is probably as good a time as any to do it. For starters, because the factory is almost certainly going to be closed on Tuesday, on the 4th of July, since it's a federal holiday. Now, whether it's going to be closed on Monday or not, since, as we have seen over time, Elon Musk, not exactly the biggest fan of vacation days, and Monday is, you know, no, no employer is required to to give the day off. That's, it's not a federal holiday the way that the 4th of July is. So anyway, even if it's just the one day, Tuesday, July 4th, it's still almost like getting a free upgrade day for Tesla. Or if you want to look at it the other way, one fewer days production lost on the Model Y. It's also the very beginning of a new quarter. So even when you're losing a day there, you can try and make up for that lost production over the course of the next three months, as opposed to if the shutdown had been this week at in the very last week of a quarter where you can't make that up. You're just, you're just kind of kneecapping your production a little bit for the quarter. Well, uh, one other thing I wanted to comment on about this is that I don't necessarily agree with the speculation, and it it was clearly framed as speculation, so no, you know, no judgment here. I'm not not, uh, calling anybody out, certainly, but I just personally don't necessarily agree with that speculation that production on the Cybertruck might start in late July or early August. Again, I'm not saying it's wrong. I just think we don't have enough information as the interested general public, but AKA outsiders, to be able to accurately predict when the start of production might be. And on top of that, we don't know how many other steps that Tesla needs to go through before actual production can begin. Because there will likely be pre-production units or release candidates, as Tesla has called them in the past, that are built on the actual production line in Texas. How many of those will there be? How long will they build them for? Are those the ones that are going to go to NHTSA for crash testing? Those are all questions that I don't have the answers to, and I don't think any of us have the answers to that don't work at Tesla. What we have to go on officially is that Elon said that we can expect the delivery event, aka the launch event for the Cybertruck, in September. And as I've said, I'm setting my expectation for that at the end of September, and if it ends up being any earlier in the month, then hey, I'll just go ahead and be pleasantly surprised. Still, the bottom line here, it is getting closer, and that is exciting. 
All right, that's everything I have for you in another busy week of Tesla news. But stick with me, I'll be right back with some of your excellent phone calls in the Ride the Lightning hotline right after this. The early bird deadline on that awesome Tesla raffle for a great cause that I've told you about the last couple of podcasts is coming up. So I wanted to mention it again, asking you, would you like to win a Tesla of your choosing, including the Cybertruck? And as I said, help a great cause while you're at it. There is the annual raffle happening right now, the ninth annual Tesla raffle from the Chicago Chesed Fund, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping families in crisis. They're funding 80 plus programs and services right now with the goal of helping families get back on their feet by offering goods and services like food, furniture, jobs, etc. And as I mentioned, you can win an S, an X, a 3, a Y, a Cybertruck, or $50,000 in cash. For your chance to win, head to ccfraffle.com where you can get $25 off of two tickets or $500 off of 15 tickets by using the promo code RTL. Again, you gotta hurry. The tickets are limited. Only 9,999 of them will be sold. And there's that early bird raffle coming up. If you buy two or more tickets before July 11th, where you will automatically be added into a second prize drawing for the chance to win a bottle of Tesla tequila at no extra charge. And yes, you will still be eligible for the main raffle even if you win that early bird raffle. So get your tickets today at ccfraffle.com and use the promo code RTL to get a $25 discount on two tickets or a $500 discount on 15 tickets. That's CCF. R-A-F-F-L-E dot com, promo code R-T-L. And then Accelerate Auto. They've got that excellent X-Care extended warranty coverage available for your Tesla. Tesla, of course, offers their own now, but Tesla's doesn't offer you any flexibility. It's a fixed two-year, 25,000-mile coverage plan. X-Care offers up to 10 years and 125,000 miles of coverage after your factory warranty is up. X-Care can also be purchased for any Tesla, no matter where you bought it, whereas Tesla's plan is only offered to customers who bought their cars new from Tesla. And, as I found out, you can only opt in to Tesla's before your car hits 50,000 miles. I had just crossed it when Tesla started offering theirs. X-Care plans can be purchased anywhere up to 125,000 miles. And finally, while both Tesla and X-Care have $100 deductibles and 24-7 roadside assistance, X-Care also offers rental reimbursement and trip interruption coverage, which, which Tesla's does not, pardon me. And X-Care covers, just to peace of mind here, X-Care's plan covers everything that Tesla's extended warranty does. So check them out, see which plan is right for you. Go to accelerateauto.com slash xcare. That's X-C-E-L-E-R-A-T-E-A-U-T-O dot com slash X-C-A-R-E. And don't forget to use the discount code LIGHTNING for $100 off of your purchase anywhere except, sadly, Florida due to a state law. But that $100 off discount code LIGHTNING at accelerateauto.com slash xcare. All right, time for the Ride the Lightning Hotline. If you've got a question, comment, or discussion topic for the podcast, I welcome and encourage you to call in and be a part of the podcast. The toll-free number that you can dial is one of two ways. That is 1-888-989-8752. Again, 1-888-989-TSLA. Or you can take the same call. Please try to keep it to 90 seconds or less so that I can get to as many people each week as possible. And you can use your smartphone's built-in voice recording software, just record it on there, and then email the file to me at my podcast email address, which you can email anytime, teslapodcast at gmail.com. And by the way, 
the Ride the Lightning hotline itself, that toll-free number that you can dial. It is kindly provided by lifeonrecord.com. If you know someone special with an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, you can give them a unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they are special. The recordings can be podcasted or put onto a keepsake. Visit lifeonrecord.com to learn more. Let's kick it off today with Jim from Los Angeles. Hi, Ryan. This is Jim from Los Angeles. I wanted to have a firsthand FSD experience, so I subscribed for a month. Within 15 minutes, a software update was available for my Model Y. I received version 12.10, which is FSD version 11.36. Two questions. One, I was wondering why I didn't get version 11.4 of FSD. And two, when I stop the FSD subscription at the end of the month, will my Model Y stay on V12 branch of software, or will I go to another non-FSD version? Thanks, and have a good 4th of July. Jim, thank you for the call, and I wish you a wonderful 4th of July as well. I suspect the answer to your first question about getting pushed an older version of FSD is similar to how the cars getting delivered from the factory often don't have the newest version of the software then. They bake in whatever version they're comfortable shipping the car with, and then eventually you get updates pushed to you. Uh, sometimes it can go on for weeks, actually. This happened with my friend Michael, where he got his Model Y, and it took a number of weeks before he got his first update. Anyway, I suspect the same practice may now apply to FSD beta, especially since for a while there, People would subscribe for a month because they'd want to try it out, and then the entire month would go by without them getting anything because a new build didn't go out in that time. Now, as to your second question, I'm not 100% on this, but I believe that no, your car will not stay on the FSD branch. You will go back to the production branch, so that will also mean that you won't, at least for now, have the new highway stack when you go back as well. I hope that helps, and I hope you enjoy your full self-driving hands-on test. Next is James from Orlando. Hey, Ryan, this is James from Orlando, Florida. I wanted to say thanks for everything that you do on the podcast. I really appreciate it. I try to catch it every week. Uh, the reason why I'm calling is I've always wondered why FSD can't be tied to like your user profile, like the way... Spotify currently is, uh, I think it'd be beneficial. For example, I've bought FSD, and it's tied specifically specifically to my Model 3, uh, and I can't use it on my on my wife's Model Y. Uh, I think having it tied to a profile could be beneficial. Like whenever I hop in her car, it just works if I'm if I'm the driver using it, um, and I think maybe that uh, solution would avoid any any you know frustrations that somebody might have uh, around like well I had FSD and I sold my car because if you had FSD and you sold your car you should have got some value out of having FSD and selling your car so I don't think you would have that kind of frustration um, but instead you just you know I hop in this car and I have FSD and then I hop in that car and I have FSD set it to the one specific car I don't know if that would ever happen it may have been raised uh, as a suggestion beforehand I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Again, thanks for everything you do. Bye-bye. Hey, James. Well, you've hit on what is arguably the biggest gripe the Tesla community collectively has. This has been something that's rankled Tesla owners for years now, and I don't blame them. There are plenty of folks out there who bought FSD back in 2016 when it first became available, and they never saw a penny of value from it, and they don't have those cars anymore. There are people who've had their cars totaled in accidents through no fault of their own, who thus lost FSD that way, only to find out that the price is now way higher than it was when they purchased FSD. I honestly don't know if this is ever going to change. It's going to, quite frankly, take a change of heart from Elon on this, and thus far, there's been no indication that that's something that's going to happen anytime soon, if ever. Now, for what it's worth, I agree with you. If it were tied to the driver, aka your account, rather than the car itself, 
It would encourage a ton of customer loyalty. Perhaps you could charge people a reasonable transfer fee if they were to trade in their FSD-enabled Tesla for a new one, you know, maybe a couple thousand bucks, something like that, to, you know, have it on a new car after you trade in the old one. But the take rate on FSD, we know it's not high here in the United States. But as we've seen time and time again and heard time and time again, Elon seems to think it is a steal at its current $15,000 price because the cars are going to appreciate more in value than anything in history ever has overnight once the robo-taxi switch gets flipped. I am not quite that bullish on it, and quite honestly, I do wish he would come back down to earth on that a little bit, into the now. Like, he's, I, I salute, I applaud, I appreciate that Elon is so forward-looking, he has done more than most humans alive for turning the future into the present, but this is one where I think it's a little unfair to current consumers uh, about the, the pricing model versus what you actually, you know, what you get versus what you pay. But I mean, for me, I'll say I am happy that I do have it on my Model 3 for the 8,000 total dollars that I paid, but if my car got totaled, or I bought a new one, for instance, the Cybertruck that my wife and I are planning to get to replace her old car, I, as of today, absolutely would not pay $15,000 for it. But of course, that's just me. Everyone has their own take on it. Now, at least the $200 monthly option is there now as a lower commitment, month-to-month -month affordable thing. But honestly, if, if I took delivery of a Cybertruck you know, anytime, sometime in the the back half of this year, I don't even know if I would spend the 200 bucks a month. I might wait until, until the, this, you know, whatever version 12 is going to be as the release version, but we'll see. Anyway, James, thank you so much for your call. And next up we have Jared from Seattle. Hello, this is Jared from Seattle calling. Ryan, thank you for all that you do for the Tesla community. Um, I'm just calling with a quick first impression of FSD beta 11.4.4. I just took a ride from my home to another spot in the city. This involved cobblestone streets, uh, stop signs that were not four-way stop signs, um, intersections that are have blind spots. It involved um, roundabouts, just a very sort of technical city drive. And this was the kind of drive that even with 11.4.3, I had been intervening, not so much for something major, but to keep it more smooth and to avoid um, upsetting drivers behind me or out of caution if the car was doing something maybe a little too aggressively. And it handled this like I would have handled it. It was really a remarkable drive. Um, I still have things to test where it failed me in the past, like going into a bus lane on another city street um, and taking the wrong lane when it needs to move into the exit exit lane for our route. So there's much more testing to do with this beta, but 11.4.4 um, seems like a more significant change over 11.4.3, um, certainly than I was expecting. So well done to the FSC team and um, happy electric motoring. Thank you, everybody. Jared, thanks for calling in and sharing your experience. I will say it really has, as much as I just got done saying I wouldn't pay 15 grand for it, that that can be true. And it's also true that it's been really, really fun to watch this project progress. I mean, when I was lucky enough to get into the beta back in the fall of 2021, I think it was October, this is exactly why. I said at the time that I wanted to have a front row seat to watch it evolve. And it really has come a long, long way. We still have version 12 to look forward to, which, as we're, we're talking about, will add another neural net. The, the final, uh, the, the thing will be comprised entirely of neural nets. And then we also have the ASS, or actual smart summon, coming apparently sometime in the nearish future as well, independent of version 12. I'm also really curious about how and when hardware 4 will start getting folded into the mix in terms of Tesla's FSD team meaningfully taking advantage of the HD radar that's in the new S and the X and the higher resolution cameras and the more advanced processing power. 
We know, of course, as I was just saying, the S and the X have hardware for. The Model Y has started to trickle out on, on new builds, and the Model 3 likely won't be too far behind, be it in the Highland or possibly even a bit before that. I still think we're a long way away from being able to go ahead and sleep in the car while it drives you where you want to go. But I do think absolutely we're going to get there eventually, which is something that I'm not sure I would have confidently said upwards of two years ago when I first got accepted into this beta. So Jared, happy electric motoring to you as well. Next up, we have Bruce from Morton Grove, Illinois. Hi, Ryan. This is Bruce from Morton Grove, Illinois. First time caller. Anyway, I was on a uh, car trip and in and out of a, a thunder shower and the sun came out and I couldn't turn my uh, windshield wipers off because I was in cruise control. And I have, I have a Model 3 uh, long range, uh, 2022. Anyway, uh, that happened a couple times, and then I thought, well, I'll tap the, uh, I'll give a verbal command. I tap the, the, the right scroll wheel, and I said, wipers off, and they went off. I didn't have to worry about it again. So maybe your listeners could uh, pick up on this. Uh, I'm sure somebody must have called about it already, but I uh, was listening to your uh, June 4th, and uh, I guess that was that was a problem. So anyway, keep up the good work. Love your podcast. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for calling in, Bruce. I think we'd need to run a few more controlled experiments with this to see if you can actually stop the wipers when they're not supposed to be wiping by using the voice command. It would be awesome if you could, and I'm glad that you were able to stop them from annoying you at least. I mean, has anybody else out there tried this? We're in the part of the year here in the San Francisco Bay Area where we don't get any rain, and we likely won't until at least October at this point. So maybe somebody else out there can give this a shot. But Bruce, I hope you had fun on your road trip. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you to everybody who kindly took the time to call in. Please keep those calls coming, and I will get to more of them on next week's podcast. I gave you the two call-in methods at the top of this segment. Stick with me, though. Ride the Lightning is not done for this week. I've got your pro tip of the week and more coming up right after this. Hi, this is Franz von Holzhausen, and you're listening to Ride the Lightning with Ryan McCaffrey, the Tesla unofficial podcast. Well, as for what I'm up to this weekend with my car, I am very, very fortunate to have a four-day holiday weekend, so I'm excited to do some driving. The weather forecast is looking really nice as a bonus here, which is great because for the last week or so, it's been nothing but cloudy and chilly. I was looking at my car this morning and was going, well, should I wash it for the weekend? But... All the long hours, I put, the almost three hours I put into cleaning it last weekend, it still looks good. So I'm just going to not worry about it. I'm just going to go out, drive it, enjoy it, have some fun. I hope you are able to do the same. Hey, here's an entertainment recommendation for you. I know I've mentioned this show at some point in the past, but I'm going to mention it because I had actually just forgotten about this show, like that it was back, that it had new episodes. Superman and Lois on the CW. It's been a really good show through the first couple seasons. I'm a couple episodes now into season three. I just watch it on the CW app, which, yeah, there's ads, but at least it's free otherwise. So I've been really, I've really been enjoying that one. Maybe I'm just on a DC kick after I saw The Flash last weekend and, and did that lightning round uh, bonus mini episode about it. But if you are a DC fan, Superman fan, I definitely would recommend Superman and Lois. It's good. Pro tip of the week time. Here's Dave from Visalia, California. Hey, Ryan. This is Dave from Visalia, California. Possible uh, tip that uh, might be of interest. I have a refresh Model X that has had some software issues. Many of them have been corrected. But one of the big ones that's missing is adjusting the following distance. The old Model X and the 3 and Y, you adjust it by moving the right 
button on the steering wheel, either right or left, and that adjusts it. The new Model X, you have to go to the control panel, find autopilot, and then adjust it there. And that's really a hassle when you're driving. But I did find a fix for it. Uh, I need to give credit to a posting by M.G. Miller on Tesla Motor Club forum. Basically, he gives a verbal command that is autopilot settings. That opens up the page immediately, and then you can adjust the following distance from there, either up or down. So it saves at least two clicks finding it uh, and all that. So I think this is really helpful. Um, I'm going to start using that from now on, and I'm grateful to M.G. Miller for this idea and also grateful for you for everything that you have done. Thank you. Dave, that's a great one for all of you S and X and future Cybertruck owners. Kind of you to give credit where you first read it also. I appreciate you doing that. And thank you for the kind words about the podcast as well. If anybody else out there has a good pro tip of the week that you'd like to share with me and your fellow Tesla owners and enthusiasts, I would be delighted if you would take the time to record it and send it in. You can do so, again, with one of those two easy ways that you can submit the regular Ride the Lightning hotline calls. Just send it in that way, and I will get it, and I'll get you another pro tip on next week's podcast. But before I go, here as I'm surrounded by not two, but again, three sleeping dogs, we are dog-sitting for Haven, who is an absolutely adorable lab. She is actually a fellow dog in the Canine Companions program with Zelina. Now, the difference is with Haven, she's not actually training to be a service dog. She is making service dogs. She's a breeder. Her family is, uh, who are friends of ours, her family uh, has her, and she's actually, she had a litter earlier this year, and she'll have another one towards the end of the year. And yeah, her goal is to try and create as many service dogs as possible. And I have to tell you, I don't think her family is getting her back. She is the sweetest dog. Zelina and Daisy are just crazy, <laughs> like in the most lovable fun. Like they are very high energy. Haven, not so much. She is super chill. She loves just being around humans. I mean, she's good with the dogs too, but my goodness, Haven is an absolute sweetheart. And so it's no wonder that that Canine Companions wanted her to be a breeder, because let's pass along those amazing traits that Haven's got. So we are happy to have her for a little while here in the house. Anyway, uh, let me mention some friends of Ride the Lightning that can hopefully be of use to you. I will start with abstractocean.com. They've kindly, uh, just for what, years, actual years now, been very generous with that offer of the 15% off discount code for first time orders. That code is RTL Podcast, all one word, no spaces. And again, head on over to abstractocean.com. Just cruise around, see what they've got. Here, I'm going to actually, I'm going to jump in there real quick because I haven't done so recently. Let me take a look at Model Y real quick. Let's see here. There is a, a, a real carbon fiber cover for the center console. That lo- that'll look cool. An underseat storage drawer. That's a good idea because the Model Y seats are raised up, which allows for something like that. $35 product. Nice, very, you know, clean looking product that just slides right under the seat. So that's good. They got the, you got floor mats, all weather floor mats that they have available as well. Uh, Velcro storage cubby to to stick onto the the Velcro carpeting on the side of the center console. Just all kinds of stuff. Again, you got to go over to abstractocean.com. I just rattled off three or four Model Y products. There's a whole bunch more, not just for the Y, but for all four Teslas and Rivians. They've got, I noticed just now, they have the, the Rivian R1S and R1T accessories on there as well. So check them out abstractocean.com, 15% off coupon code for first-time buyers is RTL Podcast. Meanwhile, the snap plate is the front license plate bracket that I highly recommend if you either want or are legally required to have a front license plate on your Tesla. This one is not going to use the automotive tape, the automotive adhesive that the one that Tesla gives you does. Instead, it just mounts up 
with in a very clean way uh, where if you take, you can take it off, but when it's on, it's on securely. You can take it off for car shows, cars and coffee. Uh, you can take it off if you're detailing, but put it back on if you like. Again, it'll go on securely with the Torx security screws with the plate and the mount. Uh, you can put it back on if you're going to be parked at a parking meter, if you're going through toll roads, bridges, that kind of thing. Anyway, get yours at everyamp.com slash RTL. Next up, budgetsafesolar.com. Sure, you're going to take a look at Tesla Solar, as I did. But if, like me, Tesla Solar doesn't work out for you for whatever reason, again, I wish Tesla Solar absolutely nothing but the best. I would have loved to have gone with them. Didn't work out for me, but Budget Safe Solar did. And my wife and I have been very, very happy. In fact, uh, today uh, I had, yeah, one of my best days. I'm not going to bore you with it because, again, it doesn't matter. It's all contextual. It's everybody's roof size and system size is different. But it has been fun to watch that solar power get generated on my roof. So if that's something that you and your family have been thinking about and you want to do solar on your home, your business, both, head on over to budgetsafesolar.com. And if you do proceed with an installation, please use the referral code RTL. And don't forget, they now offer home battery storage as well along with the solar panel. So you can get the entire closed circuit, closed loop system if that is something you so desire. If you're gonna be in the greater San Francisco Bay Area with your car and you'd like to treat it to a spa day, I could not recommend Immaculate Reflections enough. In fact, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this. I was texting with Jeff, the owner. Actually, he texted me. uh, The owner of of Immaculate Reflections, who's who's definitely become a friend. Uh, He was texting me pictures of a red 1988 Ferrari Testarossa that he's got in the shop that he's doing some detail work on right now, which is just, and he says it's got 7,500 miles on it, and it's for sale. I wouldn't even begin to imagine what a 7,500-mile red Testarossa goes for Uh, certainly it's not going to be the most efficient car in the world compared to our electric Teslas, but I just, I, I love that era the specifically the Testarossa because I was born in 1980. So when I grew up, the Testarossa was, was the Ferrari when I was kind of, you know, just old enough to really start to get into cars, which I did when I was probably four or five, uh, that started my lifelong love with, of cars. And I remember I had a poster on the wall that in the, it had a little little insignia thing in the middle that said exotic cars. And in one it was in, and there were four uh, exotic cars on it, one in each corner, one in each quadrant of the poster. One of them was a Testarossa. One of them was a Lamborghini. I think it was a Countach at the time because the Diablo didn't come out till later. Yeah, the Diablo was in the 90s. And it, there was a 911. And I don't remember what the fourth car was, but anyway, I got a kick out of out of Jeff texting me that he was he was doing detail work on a 7,500 mile Ferrari Testarossa. But anyway, getting back to detailing, if you'd like to take your car in for maybe some paint correction to get the paint finish looking as good as it possibly can. Uh, Maybe you want to do some paint protection film on the front of the car or all the key areas or the entire car. Maybe you want to do ceramic coating so that you don't have to wax the car for the next three to five years. Maybe you want to do a couple of those, all those. Maybe you want to go with the whole kit and caboodle, which is what I did. And I honestly could not be happier. I mean, it is my car looks still looks new. It's five years, 55,000 miles. It still looks new. And Jeff and his his detailing talents at Immaculate Reflections are a huge reason why. Anyway, you can get in touch with him via his website, which is irdetailing.com. And if you do that and you book in some work with him, mention that you're a Ride the Lightning listener when you first reach out. And Jeff will kindly extend you the Ride the Lightning listener discount. So thank you, Jeff, for doing that. And then the Patreon. I mentioned it briefly at the top. But again, my Patreon page is found at patreon.com slash Tesla podcast. 
Patreon spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And if you're not familiar, Patreon is kind of like Kickstarter, except it's it's in an ongoing way rather than a one-time project way, which is what Kickstarter is. So Patreon is, is a safe, secure way that you can choose to support your favorite creators, whether it's somebody like me that podcasts, whether it's an author you love, a poet that you love, a musician that you love, uh, something along, you know, anything along those kind of lines, any sort of creative endeavor, there are all kinds of wonderful people doing wonderful projects on Patreon, and I'm one of them. So this podcast will always be free for you, which should be pretty obvious, should be pretty clear at this point. It will always be that way. But uh, it does take a lot of time. It does take lots of research, and I put a lot of enthusiasm and love into this thing, and I'm very proud of the fact that I do put it out every single week. So, you know, if at some point along the way, maybe it's today, maybe this is the time, and, and hey, <laughs> I hope it is, that'd be great. But I would be humbled and grateful if you chose to support me on Patreon uh, via any of the many tiers. There are different support tiers. The basic tier the, the, is just five bucks a month. Just five bucks a month, you can be supporting me here on Ride the Lightning, and you will get in return for that five bucks a month early access to each week's show. That popular $10 a month tier that I mentioned at the top of the show, that's the one that'll get you the early access to each show and access to not just each week's lightning round bonus mini episode, but the entire archive of them, which, like I said, now is over 50 of them. So there's a lot of content up there if you do choose to back me on Patreon at that $10 a month tier. So check that out if you get a chance at some point. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram or both. Same handle either way. It's DMC underscore Ryan. You can email me anytime. My email address is teslapodcast at gmail.com. And with the referral program, the new referral program, again, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll mention that it is Tesla doesn't want people giving it out on podcasts or YouTube videos, which I totally understand. And I do encourage you to use a friend's, a family member's, a co-worker's referral code if you are going to buy a referral link, I should say, because you do have to order the car with the link to get the referral, the loot box credits. But uh, if you just need one, I am here for you. I'm happy to give you mine. Just reach out via that email address or DM me on Instagram or call in or uh, message me on Twitter. Whatever works for you, the, the numerous ways you can get a hold of me. I am happy to give you my referral code if you do need one because one way or the other, you want to get those loot box credits because you can now redeem those for supercharging miles. You can redeem them for, if you if you get enough of them, for enhanced autopilot or full self-driving. You can redeem it for Tesla merch, like the shirts, like the uh, the Tesla tequila little shot glasses. Not the tequila itself, but the... That was Oh, the decanter? Is that? No. The sipping glasses, that's what they're called. Anyway, like basically most of the merch that's on shop.tesla.com, you can redeem your points for that. But like I said, you can also redeem it for software, which is, that's pretty cool. So anyway, if you do need a referral link when you're buying your Tesla, hit me up if you need one. Finally, I want to say hello and thank you to the Plaid Maximum Plaid and Roadster in Space to your backers. I want to start, uh, start, pardon me, not stop, start with the Maximum Plaid crew this week because there is a new very generous and kind person that's joined the Maximum Plaid group and his name is Josh Pennington. Josh, thank you very much. We are having our monthly Patreon Zoom hangout for the maximum plaid and higher backers that happens the first weekend of every month. I know it's a holiday weekend. We'll see. I, I, I'm fully prepared for some people to be out of town and we'll see how the turnout is on this one, but I didn't want to push it too far into the month. But anyway, I'm looking forward to that, uh, which is going to be tomorrow, which, or in the past for most of you hearing this, but in any case, uh, we'll see if Josh, Josh Pennington decides to turn up. He is the newest Maximum Plaid backer. And thank you to the rest of the Maximum Plaid backers who are Jonathan Wales, Cameron Clark, Daniel Grummer, Seth Capello, 
Nick and Tony, the Galpin family, Ryan from Las Vegas, Darren Nickel, Kaz Barnes, Brett Libano, Patrick Wisniewski, Gil Cabrera, Watley, Mark Eversoll, Todd Badger, Joe Edgel, Kevin Yank, the Tesla Owners Club of San Joaquin Valley, Michael Williams, Will Stedman, Derek Nessel wrote, Justin Perez, Jeremy Harris, Chris Beach, Tom Mills, Alex Brim, Corey O'Donnell, Aaron, John Cody, Andre Kent, Joel Sapp, Kim Bay, Paul Casarino, Richard Corley, Chris Osborne, KB, We Drive Tesla EV Luxury Car Rental in Oahu, HaloBengals.com, Chris Pratt, Ken Epstein, Doug Carey, James Gregory, Adam Lavoy, ContactOneCallCenter.com, Jason Chalukas, Travis Krenzel, Bruce Otterstein, and Tom Behan. Thank you to the Maximum Plaid group. The grandfathered in Plaid level supporters are George Cassiopo, David Brander, Logan Willis, Peter Chalet, Eric Randolph, Dory and Steve Guberman, the Tesla Owners Club of Taiwan, Ron Lee, Charlie Gillespie, David Perella, Dennis Peak, Jeff Angwin, Chase Cabanillas, the Lydia family, Aaron Altschul, Jared Brown, Jerome Strack, Jamie Dalton, the Tesla Owners East Bay Club, Mike and Barbara from Louisville, David J. Howes, Matt Nixon, the Tesla Owners Club of Wisconsin, Jonathan Zelezny, Ish, not Elon Musk, Peter, and the Bear Boys of Colorado. And finally, the Roadster in Space tier backers. Thank you very much for your extreme generosity at this tier. To Pete White, Lyle Austin, Steve Radspinner, Fernando Cordero, Lawton from Chicago, who I had a wonderful one-on-one -on -one chat with last night as part of his uh, perk, the one-on-one -on -one chat with me every month. Thanks, Lawton, for making the time to do that. Sean Neidig, Neil Weaver, Jackson Wallace, Rolf and Jennifer Evers, Howard Anthony Smith, Victoria Iacoveto, Tesla Hitchhiker 42, Kara Weston, Robert from Near Philly, and Chase Lancaster. Thanks to all of you at every Patreon tier for your kind and generous support of the podcast. It does not go underappreciated or unappreciated. It is very much appreciated. All right. Uh, this is the end of Ride the Lightning episode 413. Again, I hope all of you in the U.S. enjoy a safe, healthy, and super fun 4th of July holiday weekend. I will be here. I'm going to be chilling out. Like I said, I'm going to go for, probably just try to drive the car, kind of relaxing otherwise. I do want to go see Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It's been getting mixed reviews. IGN, my own website, actually gave it a, a pretty lousy review, but then I've seen plenty of other reviews that say, hey, no, it's super fun. I'm going to go for myself and just enjoy it, hopefully. I didn't like Crystal Skull. I mean, I'm not alone in that. Um, but hopefully, hopefully uh, Harrison Ford's send-off with this character is going to be a fun one. So I hope you have a fun 4th of July holiday weekend if you're celebrating. And happy electric motoring. And I will see you all back here next week. I mean, I think a Tesla is the most fun thing you could possibly buy ever. That's what it's meant to be. Our goal is to make, it's, it's not exactly a car. It's actually a thing to maximize enjoyment. It's maximum fun.